Hi everyone, my name is Alberto, I'll be your host for today and welcome to episode four of the Book Your Life chat show. Um, today we're going to have a special discussion. Um, we're going to have a guest, his name is uh, Mark Camilleri, he's a chef. Um, and we're actually going to be talking about the catering industry um, and his consultancy support services he offers uh, for catering here in Malta. Well, anywhere in the world. As usual, I'd like to thank everyone that is watching the shows. If you have any questions, thoughts, feedback, please do post them in the comments. We'll be happy to have them live um, and have Mark um, answer any questions or even just talk about uh, what your thoughts are and what your feedback is on everything that we're going to be discussing. In the meantime, I am going to invite Mark in so we can give a quick hello to Mark. Hey! Hi, Hi Mark. Alberta. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? <laughs> well, Very I'm well, good. thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm good as well, thank you. Um, how's your week been for so far? Okay, very good. I'm enjoying the weather. It's improving a bit. Yes, because mm. we're getting back to normal, Sunny. But I've heard tomorrow we're going to have... Uh... <laughs> <Heat>? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, uh, um, I'm quite happy with a bit of freshness at this point. Yes. After all that heat. Oh, very good. Very good. I think we're two opposites here. I'm a big fan of winter and uh, quilts and hot drinks and rain and cold. But I'm guessing you're a bit of a summer person. Not really. I prefer the, the, the winter. Yes. yes. Amazing. Especially here in Malta, those two months. I mean, you, you, in the beginning, it's all well and good, but then you're like over and done with. Let's go on. Let go. <laughs> So, Mark, um, first off, thank you very much for accepting our invitation on today's show. I'm excited for this program. Thank you for having me. Super. Um, before we go into the questions we have on the agenda today, I would like you to introduce yourself for our viewers. Um, okay, I'm Mark, as, as you said. So, um, I've been involved in catering for quite some time, as in I, I, I grew up in a family that liked to eat sort of um in Malta, I know. In Malta. <laughs> um, i have a little obsession which is food yes um and uh, my career is a bit varied as in i i i went to catering school quite late uh, here in malta at ITS. um i think i was about 20 21 i'm trying to remember uh, in fact, when I was reading your questions, I was trying to put dates, and then I got a bit. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. Don't about worry. the dates. Um, I, my first job, I think, was about when I was about 15, 16 at one of my uncle's restaurants, which was quite crazy at the time. I used to do a bit of everything. The, the restaurants closed, but it used to be called Poco Loco. Um, and if you know a bit of Spanish, you can translate the word. Um, and then I got into, I went to catering school. I had gone on internship to Scotland. Um, Very good, interesting. That was my sort of uh, first experience overseas. Um, at the time I used to cook for, for, friends of, of, uh, for friends of mine and their families. So I always got into this sort of private dining, private chef kind of thing. Uh, when okay. I got back, when I got back from Scotland, I was Scotland. I was finishing off, so it was the last year at, at ITS, and um, I had got my first proper client uh, for private chefing, and I ended up in France. Um, now, I, I, my mother's family are Italian, so my grandmother was Italian, so I grew up in a more of an Italian food culture. Okay. And then ended up in France. Um, so, okay, I had studied French, okay. but until you get back there and get back into talking French, it, it took a while. And I changed drastically into sort of your Francophile kind of thing. So it was French wines, French cheeses. Um, I was based in Angers, so the northwest of, of France. And uh, I had this client for about three or four years. Um, so I used to go up and down to France cook for them. Uh, then after, basically, I also went to Australia because I went to study. Wow. Uh, I did a master's in gastronomy okay. in Australia. Um, and when I got back, 
my intention was never to sort of remain in Malta. Um, I wanted to keep on traveling. And with some friends of mine, we decided to get into business together. Um, at the time, I was uh, writing on Taste magazine, um, got to know my partners at the time, which were Alex, Matei, and Nick, Camilleri Preziosi, and Sebastian Shout Giorgio. Shout out to them. Yeah. <laughs> Sebastian De Giorgio, um, who was with me at school. And uh, basically, we created a catering company, uh, which was called Fifth Flavor. And our main focus was private dining, sort okay. of, um, and, and, and we cooked for some interesting people. Um, and the operation grew, sort of, uh, one thing led to the next, and then we took over some other companies and created an even bigger operation. So then we had uh, various outlets, we did about seven years of that. Yes. Uh, and in 2016, I just needed a break from everything and sort of decided to try something new. And at, at the time, uh, I was at one of the cooking competitions held in Malta, the one that happens every two years. So it was about four years ago. And incidentally, speaking to someone, someone asked me, oh, do you want to come and learn how to use a particular oven and provide training to people with, the, with this oven? So, yes, well and good. So I got into that. And this started uh, evolving where people were asking me to help them with sort of either changing a menu or finding a way to design a new kitchen. And sort of okay. one, one thing led to, the, to, to another. Um, so this is all quite, quite new as such, at least from, from my end. Um, so I still remained within the realm of catering, but from a sort of outsider's perspective. Um, so yeah, that, that is sort of my of a summary. brief summary of, of a very long time. It's, it's quite an interesting part that you've taken um, and now you are focusing specifically with the consultancy services, right? With the many development training. Uh, yes. So now it's, it's sort of, I, I have a number of clients uh, at the moment and I think currently it's even more interesting because of this little hurdle we are faced with, which is called COVID. A new challenge. A new challenge um, and finding ways to sort of um, be creative in 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 these uh, in these times as such. So certain things don't particularly change. So where you're looking at a client that has been cooking for a while is not particularly trained. Just has been using it as a as a business venture and uh, asked to look, I'm cooking these items. What do you think about this menu? How can we make it one easier as an operation? And secondly, you know, why am I losing money on this dish and not on that one? So okay. of trying to, to streamline the, the oper operation. Another one is looking at a, a business project sort of went in from the conceptual part, sort of there's an idea of opening up uh, a restaurant, there was a space, and we're working and developing it sort of from the beginning. Sort of, you have your architects and then looking for your equipment, uh, trying to see what kind of stuff you need, and, and building it uh, as we go along. And then there are sort of items like um, having products and developing product knowledge. Either product knowledge Excellent. within sort of people in the hospitality industry, so either your kitchen team or your front of house team, use this product. And then from a supplier's perspective, as in I sell these products, can you train my sales team to, to be able to... and. You know, in the, in the industry, even when, when we had the restaurants, you know, the number of suppliers that come and say, look, I have this product, well and good, you know, from a, from a cooking perspective. So why should I use your product? How is it going to be beneficial to, 
to me me and the team this. and exactly exactly very good um uh, and uh, before because i do want to go in specifically and talk about okay. each different service that you're offering even for everyone watching the show especially to understand um and i even might have some questions for you like uh, something came up um with regards to covid you know and these last few months have you seen any like pattern of struggles between different um uh, companies that have asked for your help even within the team no i i, I think, I think the, the biggest struggle at the moment is that obviously for a number of reasons everyone is running at uh, at lower occupancy as in from a from a numbers perspective so if you had to be um cooking well before you were cooking for 50 people and now you're cooking for 25 all your numbers have to make sense with your sort of 25 people um nowadays uh, everyone is more concerned with uh, better service better better quality um so it's trying to be able to provide that within the realms of of all hospitality as a whole as in it was always a concern that you always want to provide a good service and you always want to cook a good product ultimately i think just COVID put us in a situation where we we really need to tackle these things yes now. of course of course um uh, very good thank you very much for for answering my different questions i i might come up with different ones here and very there. good very good tell go you for before. It. um but before even we go into everything i i do want to know what inspired you to become a chef and perhaps even more importantly what inspired you to transition into this of the consultancy services Mela, who inspired me Mela, my my mother's family they all cook so yes <laughs> from from a young age as in from the word go food was always there in your face um and all of them as in my mother her sisters her brothers they all were specialized in in in, in a particular category of cooking so my mother was really good at making pasta one aunt was making good at desserts an uncle at fish another one at meat and our family meals on sunday was very much uh, a big thing so the saturday they used to meet up start preparing and 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 it's so a big family affair in fact Amazing. like i used to have packed lunches either my mother used to make me cotoletta and a sandwich or raw um, mushroom salad with parmesan really? and olive oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was stuck with the ham and cheese and I'm some not... occasionally the hidden Nutella sandwiches. It, 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 it was a bit too basic <laughs> for me at, at that point. Uh, as in, when we're together talking about us growing up, like, I, for me, a meal was, hey, you know, I want to eat with a fork and knife, not a, sa a sandwich is not a meal, you know, <laughs> that, that, and, and that kind of thing. Okay. So, do not uh, come to my house and do not come in my kitchen. My, my sister is totally <laughs> opposite, and they're like, you know what I mean? So, it's, um, she likes food, but she does not go into the kitchen. Okay. Um, so, I, I would say it's, it's very much a family, family thing, as in I grew up always wanting one way or another to be involved in food. Um, to be as good as these dishes that your whole family was was creating ah, it, week it, after week it it was and then there was a lot of time that i spent with with my uncle federico as in he had restaurants and he he showed me a way of sort of the, the whole business perspective onto it i understand um so yes he had a had a, a strong influence on me and i saw it as a as a way to travel as in that thing that my mother always pushed us to sort of travel as in she spent her life um, so catering and hospital hospitality are the best thing if you want to travel because one you can work anywhere in the world ultimately and uh, the opportunities are endless so you study so we're here we're in malta we're at the its we are studying your basic classical cooking 
sort of your classical cooking is your your foundations to to cookery. Now, if you have your foundations, you can you can work anywhere. Now, th that is the most important part. Sort of if you're working in Scotland or you're working in France or you you know you're uh, in Asia, uh, the principle is the same. It's just changing yes. depending on what area you you're in. Uh, the transition to getting where I am. Well, when I when I ended with with the company, it was sort of for a number of reasons. Uh, I was in a, a very dark place at the time, as in I needed a break. It, it was um, it was time for change, as in yeah. at the time you you get to a point where you're doing something all the time and it's like you're not really moving forward and uh, the best thing to do one is if you're in that situation is to talk to someone and that, that yes. sort of that sort of helped me with 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 the decision process and uh, then coming as in you know you have to do something that is fine and then it's actually doing it so that was the next step um uh, so I, I always say it was probably the hardest decisions I ever had to make, but probably it was the best decision I made. Um, it was the hardest because you're sort of leaving behind your team uh, as, yes, as a whole. Yes. And, Changing everything. And we had a very big team, as in team from, from partners to, to your staff, to your team. That Don't forget, when you're working in, in a kitchen, as in you're starting at eight in the morning and then you're home by 1 a.m. the next day. You spend a lot of time with your team. They are your yes. second family. And uh, as in we are still in touch, we still talk, you know what I mean? We, we help each other whenever we need. I think all the catering community around Malta, like everyone knows each other. There's a whole community between everyone. Yes, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting community. As in your lifestyle, your pattern works around that. Now people go, as in the first first reaction from people go, ah, because you know you work weekends and holidays. For me, personally, Monday to Sunday they are all the same, I I irrelevant. So you know they could be all named, yeah. they could be all named Monday for 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 me. Um, but you plan your your life depending on the situation you're in so for us to go out used to be we used to go out after service be it one o'clock in the morning you know exactly or if you're off and you want to go out you end up waiting until your friends from the industry are off and then you end up going out at 2 a.m in the morning exactly. or, or 3 a.m so so <laughs> you're going out is going back to work so tough, exactly. but you're not quite, working. quite uh, <laughs> quite a difference but it is fun. I think every 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 job there is has its ups and downs. As in, there are the good moments and and the bad moments, and uh, you Definitely. know you make the most out of them. And that that is that is the beauty of of hospitality. I think, and yes. even more the people that you meet along the way. So very it, good. It's a very strong social people thing. There are connections. Some really work. Some not so much, but um, the but joints. it is a different. It's a completely different scene. You have the people that work nine to five, Monday to Friday. Then you have the people that work the weekends. But because, like you said, it doesn't make a difference. Like my brother is a chef. It doesn't make a difference for him if it's Monday or Saturday. Yeah, he has his five days during the week. Sometimes six. And he has sometimes his Monday seven. Off. Sometimes seven. <laughs> sometimes it's three weeks in a row, and you have no idea what's happening around you. And you're like, okay, I'm alive. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> But it's a very, very fun job because you're continuously creating something new, continuously serving a different person. And I, I think this thing of, of, of hospitality is one of the things. It is an extremely rewarding industry to go into. Um, it's it's so diverse and fun and thing that you know what I mean. Yeah. You can't just look at it as being negative in the sense that you have to be willing to do it one you know you have a bit of pride in in yourself and in the in the job it, it is uh, extremely rewarding it's so true. anyone it's choosing true. a career choose hospitality yes <laughs> um mark can you tell us exactly the style of food that you cook <laughs> <It's> okay <everything. laughs> yeah, no it's 
uh, I think style is one depending in the mood I'm in at, okay. at the time when, I, when I'm sort of cooking. And uh, secondly, would be sort of what uh, what people want. But if this is probably the hardest question, one of the hardest questions, because I've been asked this quite a few times. And since you sent me the, the list of questions, I've been thinking about how I'm going to answer this one question. Um, if I had to put it as a one word kind of uh, answer, it would be flavor. As in, I am, I am more concerned about the flavor of, of the food um, than anything else. As in, for me, something has to taste good. Yes. Uh, I know that we go a lot that aesthetically it has to, to look good. It has to look pretty. Um, yes, I agree with that. But at the end of the day, we need to eat it. So the taste is a bit fundamental over there. The memory comes um, from the taste. Yes. As so, when we smell something or so on. You know that obviously if something is not plated nicely, you are going to have that, that you're going to stand back a bit before, before you eat it. Um, but flavor and I think a bit of respect of your ingredients as in sort of knowing what you are buying and trying to to use that ingredient at its best at its, its best it's best yes sorry it's fine okay Long. all right interesting interesting now um so we've covered a bit who you are um uh, a bit of the services we've covered how you started how you came in and even gave in an overview within the catering industry and um, so thank you for all the questions you've answered so far Pleasure. i do want to go into um now with the services that you are offering so can you explain to us the catering support services you offer on regards to the menu development recipe writing and the product development okay so th this is on the lines like i mentioned earlier so imagine you have a catering establishment either you're sort of starting off or you want to sort of add something new i i think and this looking back uh, when we had the restaurant and i had quite a, a big brigade at the time um we were always sort of trying to change our menu and it is the first year we were operating i think i changed the menu three times and from my perspective it's because i get bored really easily so for me as in to have the same thing on the menu all the time is, is yeah. a bit demoralizing. But so even the same, perhaps for your regulars. I mean, having a regular coming and finding a different. It it, it works a bit, I think, two ways. So one, we're looking at, at at sort of your personal thing that you always want to try something new. So at a point, we had your fixed menu, and then you have your sort of specials menu, and you're always changing. Um, on the other end, there is sort of this thing, and it's quite common, that we don't particularly like change. So, okay. I go to this restaurant to eat this dish. I know that if I go to this restaurant, I am going to get this plate of... And the first time I experienced this was at one of my uncle's restaurants. It was in Slim, it was a little trattoria. We used to change the menu often. And he had a number of dishes which he was really good at. And there was this dish, this pasta dish, was called spaghetti dico, which we did not have. And I remember one time, and at the time with my uncle, I used to work front of house, not even in the kitchen. So I used to work service. So I spent quite a few years working okay. service. We had a group of people, they came, they sat down, I gave them the menu, and they go, uh, I want pasta dico. Um, we don't have it today. What do you mean you don't have it today? Uh, because we didn't find it, drain it. Uh, see what you're going to do. I want that plate of pasta. Ah. No, no. Okay. Um, I know. I'm sorry, but we don't have the ingredients. I came for that plate of pasta. If you don't give me that plate of pasta, I'm going to leave. Um, well, it, it's a bit <laughs> of a So there is this inherent thing that is quite common, as in that we don't like change. As in change is, is very no. hard. As in, you know, you know what you like, you know what you want. So when you come and change a menu, it is also, you also come and think about, okay, if I change a menu, are my clients going to be happy? Am I going to lose? Who's going to complain? So there are a number of steps that you have to look at. Yeah. 
I am I was always the type, okay, if I'm going to change a menu, I'm not going to change one item, I'm going to change it all. If and they like button. What would be the like it's a process. Because yes, yes, the um, the guests, the clients might not like the change, but how about actually inside the kitchen? Would they be open to this change? Um, this this is it depends on the on the situation that is in. I think for a menu, as in, if someone had to come up to me and there is a brigade, there's a whole system behind it. And uh, someone comes up to me, you know, write me a new menu and train the staff. Now, I'd, that is, and this was one of the things that people told me, are you crazy and doing it? As in, um, are you going in and you're going to tell another chef what to do? As in, exactly. I faced that problem one time when I was at the company and all of my partners came in and told me, you know, why don't you get in someone to help you with the menu? I go, help me with the menu. What are you, crazy? Get out of my kitchen. Um, it, it has to be something that you have to work together as a team, as in sometimes it's good that you take an outsider's perspective. Um, in the in the past, I used to look at it as saying like, you know, you know, either my way, how I like it, and that's it. I think now we have to sort of look at it in a bit more of a wider perspective. I'm the okay. first one to say I used to be the total opposite to this, as in... Okay. Uh, we have many boxes to tick. We have the kitchen brigades boxes to tick. We have the owners boxes to tick. And we have the customers perspective. Now, at the end of the day, um, well and good if I like to cook one thing and I'm going to plate it in one way. If the customer is not going to buy it, it is irrelevant. It's a waste of time. But then after, you know, we have to be a bit um understanding towards the pride and pride is a is a big word here um of your kitchen team a lot of work goes into putting a, a, a dish together and, and food it's not just a matter of you know you turn on your burner and you cook there's a exactly. lot of back 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 of house work that goes into it so it is a, a joint effort of working together with the team um, to create something new. And this happens when people don't have time. As in, it, it's not easy just to sort of stop one menu and start the next. You need time to develop it. You need to see that a menu actually works within the context of your kitchen. So, okay. And I think, uh, in fact, you're answering my next question straight off here, where I wanted to go into, like, how do you go about... Um, uh, offering the consultancy services with the kitchen setup, the training, and, and everything there is to your service. Exactly. So you basically have to work with the team and say, for, so you, numbers never lie. So ideally, if you look at a, a, a menu and you're saying that out of the menu mix that you have, pasta moves more for you. It's pointless having only two types of pasta. So, it would make more sense that they have a bit more pasta. So I think it's a bit of a balance. Now, if you're putting on fish on the menu and you never sell fish, you have to you have to analyze why I am not ser ser selling yes. that type of product. So after you sort of design the the menu trials that you want to add, and then it's working with the team and then training the team to how to do that menu. And this normally the training works a bit more on, it's a new team, um, we put a menu together, we're trying to find the best way that fits the operation because there's no one size fits all. As in yeah, the exactly. size, size of a kitchen and restaurant uh, from a small uh, snack bar to uh, a restaurant will, will, will vary. Ultimately. And of course and do you also go into like i imagine you have to go into um evaluating even the talents of each particular different chef in the kitchen to get the utmost for the menu um i believe a lot in talent i believe a lot in people as in you need to sort of you need to have a good mix between uh, between people in your kitchen um depending on what you want to achieve at the end of the day as in there there are 
there is people that that I think can never go missing, although sort of with technology we're, we're going to say a different di dimension. And actually, technology when we're looking at equipment. Um, so I, I I give training on a particular oven, um, uh, a, a brand of ovens. You and can mention the brand if you'd like so to. I, don't I, mind. I use uh, Rational Ovens as in one, of, one of the brands, uh, a, a very a very strong uh a brand as a super oven as in the first time i had used rational was when i had gone to scotland the first time um and you speak to chefs and you go you know you mention rational ah yes you know really good thing and then people go ah but you know they don't want to invest in this oven because it, it's not the cheapest product of the market. Course, but we know as well that well established uh hotels and restaurants and so on of course do use this brand no, as well it, it's a mix as in Myself speaking, when I when I had the company, we never actually bought a rational. Um, we yes. always had we had, we had but we, we worked around different ways. I always wanted a rational, but I had the people that signed the checks, which were also a bit, like, you know, no, you, you, no, you know, no, Han, I'm rabbit. sorry. <laughs> um, and the idea of training, as in, I, I go for training, obviously with the with the parameters when I haven't been in a while, and you are always trying to find the best way to use your equipment. It's not just the rational, it's any form of equipment, as in it's training to maximize your investment. So exactly. if you are buying uh, an oven of X amount of euros, you know, that is meant to cook in an intelligent way, you need to teach people on how to use this, this, um, these functions or else just get something normal and don't use the efficiencies. So yes, there is scope in training. And training is not just a matter of sending someone because when you train your your staff, you make them happy. It's a form of, of, of yes. sort of... It's a motivation. Pieces. It's pushing them, giving them different challenges. And this part of training is one of them, as in, and I've done it when I was in the industry. You know, you're going through through so many things so many people that you go away oh, you know i'm just going to throw him in the deep end you know suppose he should uh, he or she should survive out of it but if you train to your specifications the transition between someone joining and them feeling part of the unit is much quicker so okay. If you're cooking five dishes and you actually take time and you go, okay, look, these are the dishes. This is how we do them. Now, the, the a, a classic and a simple example I use is that when we're looking at a tomato sauce, there are a hundred million ways to make a tomato sauce. There is the way we learn under our classical training. And then there's a way that we learn it at home. And then there's a way to learn it in the industry. So instead of assuming that they are going to cook it like you want, train someone to cook it the way you want. So at least there is no guesswork. The, the process okay. is much faster. Right? As in, I wish I was, used to think this way five years ago. You know, it it it's, uh, it would have made things so, so much easier. You know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely. Um, uh, Mark, is it difficult to adapt to different working environments for you? Um, Yes and no. Some, uh, I think, one of them is is getting away from the way I like to do things. As in, if you had to see like the way I, I was running my kitchens, it was very sort of disciplined and a bit of OCD. So everything has to have a label. Okay. Everything everything has a place where to live. So. Uh, I was, so I think it is more about bridging that and saying, okay, so I need to understand the system that you adopt and then come up with either uh, alternative or a slight change to make it fit within the, within the parameters. So okay. if um, the, the personal, uh, experience is always going to come into it. So if I'm used to doing one thing, I will try and share that. And then it's up to you to sort of gauge, okay, this makes sense or this doesn't make sense. Yes. Um, 
Now we have an end result. We want to create something. Now, ultimately, how you get there is, is, is not set in stone, as long as we get there. So, yes. and uh, that's why it's a bit of a team effort, this work, you know, and, and this came about when we used to develop menus, it was very much, I used to involve everyone in the menu, sort of from a okay. kitchen department and give or take, it used to take us about three months to put a menu together. As in, we come up with ideas, this works, this doesn't work. Okay, we, we used to change depending, we used to do a, a winter and a summer menu. Okay. Um, for us, it was easier, and I know it was easier for me to put together. It's because, one, I had a large brigade to do it. And secondly, I had the time to say, I'm going to dedicate, you know, three months to working on a menu. In reality, um, certain operations don't, don't, don't have the time or the luxury to do that. Um, but involving the team as a whole, makes it much easier because people are cooking what they like ultimately yes. within the country. and sometimes you get to know a thing new dishes from people from their experiences and this sort of hospitality is all about experiences that that you have and sharing it with you. every single day every single moment be it if it's experience with the team experience with the client everything there has to be. it's it's one of the most I think important factors. Yes, for sure. Um, super. I, I think you've explained and given me a perfect answer for every question <laughs> put on the agenda for you. <laughs> so thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> you're a very nice person as well to have on the show. You're very friendly. You're very, uh, it's, it's fun to have you on the show today, Vera. Thank you. Um, uh, Mark, I'd like to ask you if you have any great accomplishments that really stick out in your career, stand out in your career. This was the second hardest question that you put on the on the on the list. As in, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks. I, I, I find the word accomplishments to be a bit of a, a hard one to. I, I prefer to look at them as experiences rather than accomplishments. I would say sort of. A number of experiences that I think have left a bit of a, a mark on, on on myself. I think one was um, when I used to lecture at ITS. I had gone with the with the team to a cooking competition in Birmingham. Okay. Um, I was just an accessory. Okay. I had never been to a, a competition before. Um, they had um, a number of chefs, lecturers from ITS, and we had a number of other chefs from, from Chef Society. There was Roderick Vella, Jimmy Aquilina, Ryan Marmara, that these have been doing uh, competitions for a very long time. As in, I had, I had seen them, but I have never lived in them. And then there were the oh. students, so the whole process, as in, and there was Steve Danastasi from ITS, we were together at the time. Um, the competition world and competitions are extremely exciting and any form of competition helps you develop okay so, um i was i was in charge of typing out the menus you know before you go to the competition where all they right. were doing all, all these really cool um, things the students did uh, a great performance uh, as in it was a super five days um so Whenever there are competitions, especially in Mota, go and support your local chefs and front of house staff who put a lot of effort into competing, as in they're really cool because you are competing on, this, on a level playing field. You have a number of categories you're going in and you're being judged by international judges, which is uh, a super accomplishment. Uh, last year, not last year, as at last year, I ended up um, judging at the World Cheese Awards. Okay, really? Uh, uh, yes. Um, wow. So I, I'm studying cheese at the moment, so I'm like halfway there through, uh, through a school in London. And I had no idea there's a cheese award. I love that. <laughs> and I'm sure three quarters of the population in Wota would love this. <laughs> it is super fun. As in, you know, uh, there, there were a crazy amount of cheeses, crazy amount of judges. We were 
We were in Bergamo for three days. And uh, the day of judging, as in team of three, you have, I think, 60 or 70 cheeses, and you have seven hours to try them all and give them a, a, a mark. And then sort of it continues. And uh, last year it was an American cheese, a blue cheese that won, um, which ended up head to head with um, Parmigiano Reggiano, which was that lost home. So it was, it was, uh, it was a very. <laughs> I'm big... sure you were in heaven, absolute heaven. Like your day literally consists of tasting different cheeses. <laughs> uh, to, to be fair, I had a good table because sometimes, as in. Even for example, processed cheese, they do, you can't take part. If you produce cheese, you can't take part. So okay. there was a table just with processed cheese. So okay. uh, those judges were tasting cheese in the plus, which <laughs> really said, it's still cheese. You have to do what you have to do. Uh, cool. um, and um, a couple of years ago, I, not last summer, the summer before, there was a, a pop up. Uh, it was organized for charity here in Malta. Uh, yes. There were a uh, uh, a number of chefs that came from Thailand. Yes, okay. Um, it was all for charity. It was a sort of a month event, as in uh, these have restaurants in Bank. We're working Bangkok, Phuket. Uh, so there's this guy John Becker who's in Bali, Tim Butler who is in, in Bangkok, and their standard. I had personally, I had never worked with anyone within that sort of realm of cooking really cool in the sense okay from the food side was super fun um, but you make friends and this is a fun thing of, of hospitality yeah um, so last year i did quite a bit of travel between vietnam bali and thailand so when i was in bali i met john his girlfriend took me around so i've seen these places that's some some really cool things tasting different foods, foods. continuously i mean um, in in bangkok um when I went there, I, I spent, I think I was there for about eight days by myself before I met some other, some other people. Cool. And uh, my friend Billy took me around from, as soon as I arrived in, in Thailand, an hour later, he was waiting for me at the hotel and I started going around food markets. Amazing. And I had a couple of dinners at, 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 with Tim Butler. Which, so, and you meet people, you know, you just sort of, like you were saying, a community, sort of this community extends really cool, uh, fantastic, and I can't wait to get back to Asia. Hopefully, so, yeah. Yes. Let's hope we're going to get a better 2021 and keep on track back and doing it what we love, you know, it's the quantities that everyone was doing them at before everything sort of goes back to normal. Yes, we should, we should get there. I think it's, uh, it's a matter of time before things yes. sort of settle in. We just have to be, you know, a bit patient and find ways to, to sort of survive. Exactly. Point. Exactly. So I am going to push into the next question, Mark, because we've hit over 40 minutes. Okay. Um, and I know, you know, everyone's on their lunch break. So you know, they don't, and I do want to get them to to be able to hear all your questions. Um, now, I, my next question was for you personally, as in, I, I wanted to know what your feedback is on booking when you dine out with friends and family. Like, do you go online? Do you go through phone? Uh, how do you do? That? Well, um, how do you go about it. Going out to eat over here, as in, mainly I I, I go to eat at sort of people I know, so it's, it's much easier okay. to sort of phone. But um, from traveling quite a bit, the online booking is is, is more efficient, as in there is a, uh, a way to keep track of where you're booking and how you're booking. Um, so yes, I think now that we're in this sort of digital age, I think it's a matter of using uh, online booking. It's, it's easier, more convenient at the end of the day. Um, so, so yeah, Definitely. I would say... And you always go out to eat at like people that you know you, you don't go off and try hey listen okay we're in the middle of rabat let's go and try one two three or oh, to, to, to be fair i don't go out to eat much <laughs> okay <laughs> um, so um i i like to go to sort of friends of mine and sort of either you know come and try this and that generally when i go to eat at a friend of mine i I just said, I'm look, cook what you feel like cooking for me. Um, don't give me the menu. It's so if you want to give me Hobbs with Zay today, just give me Hobbs with Zay. Hobbs with Zay. Um, Amazing. When I go out to eat, it's very much sort of I'm, I'm sitting down, I'm there eating, just enjoying the, the 
company I'm, I'm with and uh, that, that's where sort of my eating out kind of thing. okay but from traveling quite a bit the efficiencies of booking online are uh, much superior they're easier Definitely. that's sort of you have your phone i want to go and leave at this place and i want to go and leave that the exact words were told to me by Jonathan Chilia from Love and Malta a few weeks ago, exactly the same. It's much more efficient, it's easier, and you get to know about good places. You know, when you're online, you're, you're able to get an understanding um, and not just judge a place by its front door, for example, yeah. but being able to see what other people have to say. Um, is there anything that you'd like to see change in booking processes here in Malta? Um I, w I would say it's more about uh, people who book and don't show up to to their booking. I think it used to happen before and now it's a bit more relevant as in everyone is sort of working already at half capacity, you know, trying to keep a lot of people are putting in a lot of hard work to be able to, to fit in all the measures for everybody's safety. The last thing you want to do is like, you know, that. You have 15 people today you're you're full and half of them don't turn up i think the, exactly. i think the part where if you had the time to book you have the time to cancel Pro problems exactly. come up it, it really just let people know uh, about it and uh, i i am all for uh, deposits when it comes to sort of booking okay. i think it's it's only fair as in a deposit you pay it if um, that money is going to go towards your bills or so towards your bills. Exactly. Now, if you don't show up, it is ultimately your fault. And why should, you know, the restaurateur that has put in so much planning as a unit suffer because you just didn't want to, to book. So, yeah. 100% agreed on that. Um, I did actually put on a story of mine yesterday about no shows because they do hurt a restaurant, especially when you're you're um, literally just not showing up or even canceling 15 minutes before. Yeah, it's, it's... You know, at least cancel an hour before. If you can, a few hours before, it's even better because a restaurant is going to get walk-ins from 7.30 till 8.45. Oh, yes. After that... It's and very difficult. The size of Malta is the size of you, you're, you're not London, you know, you don't have exactly. a passing trade of uh, 10,000 people, you know what I mean? Exactly. If Apparently, uh, we're small in quantity, then again, we have a lot of people that are not going out, yeah. but we still yeah. have a good percentage of people that are still loving going out for cocktails, drinks, food. Yes. At least. I think people should go out more to eat, as in go for it, support your local restaurants. Try out new restaurants. Check bookia.mt, some cool <laughs> restaurants. There. Super. So this is my it. next go question for, for you. So what do you think about bookia.mt? No, I, I really like your platform. It's really cool. I think it's a, it's a nice way. I think some really nice photography. Easy to use. As in, I just went on and, and, and so and was, was going to book on somewhere. So I have an idea where I'm going to book, I think, for this weekend. So, yes, I'll, I'll give it a Amazing. shot for sure. And, amazing, uh, amazing. Uh, recommend it to people in the industry and to my family and friends to use it. Super. And um, we did actually, so like, for example, with, with trying to book, if you're going to go to use it, it literally takes two minutes to book. The system will know, make sure of contacting the restaurant, see if it's available. And if yes, you get email and SMS notification that the restaurant can accept, ha could not uh, accept why if they're fully booked or maybe they need to change the time something as well that um, we've been focusing on a lot as well for you to know is customer support so if the restaurant can't accept your booking perhaps because of the time we'll go in manually and okay. get the restaurant note to check what time get back to the user and trying to sort it out if the restaurant is fully booked we've even gone through scenarios where listen it's saturday night you're trying to book at 7 p.m for 8 p.m um just give me your five favorite restaurants from this list and i will take care of contacting them so we try and make the process good. as easy as possible at but, the moment what we want to make sure is that the system is easy for everyone to use while we fine-tune with every single feedback that we receive okay 
Yeah. Up to two days ago, for example, the whole um, profile system of how the restaurants show actually last Friday, we just updated it, complete change. It's more easier to use now through mobile devices because we have a lot of people coming in through phone. Okay. So it's been an amazing experience. And going back to your point in the previous question with the no shows, cancellations and so on, we do constantly send reminders and you'll see it when you try a book. Yeah? The system will continuously send you reminders it's in, uh, click here to cancel your book the care if you need to change let us know if you need to okay. change so as much as possible the restaurants we can help them out now we've been two months so it's eight weeks um but eight weeks i think we've had a cancellation per week but at least okay. the restaurant was notified in in a good amount of time frame there's always only one booking that was cancelled within less than an hour where they you know we notified the restaurant straight away gone in manually again and so on with no shows we're really happy with this we've only had two no shows okay which you know when you're going on eight weeks too it, and you're looking at 10 bookings per day now we're hitting 20 25 bookings per day fantastic so it's a good it's a good number yes we're happy people seem to like it i'm glad you like it i do hope um, you could maybe send me a bit of feedback from your end when you use it to the restaurant this weekend Super. Um, I am hitting my last question for you today, Mark. Uh, I'd like to know what your future plans are. Um, okay. At, at the moment, I'm I'm working on a on a cooking show with Ben and Bull Barbecues, um, and that is a bit of a, a fun thing of how to cook with a barbecue. And uh, I think the shows are every first Sunday of the month. Cool. We've already done one, and the next one comes out on the first of November. And uh, hopefully, once sort of our travel uh, situation comes kind of back to more, um, <laughs> I'm working with this travel agent that specializes in adventure travel um, on a number of things. And we're doing this thing which is called food safaris. Yes. Um, so it's basically going abroad to eat, as in eat in, in general, to see producers, um, see the culture behind it all. Um, it's a really good way of training staff if you want. So, yes. you know, you take people as, as in, it's not just a holiday. You're going to sit down on the beach. Sort of, there are different activities and related to the sort of food and beverage industry. So when you're looking I like at, that. you know, so I think you should come on a trip if you like to eat and drink. So, yeah, and it's going to be in Asia. Let me know where and when, and I'll have my good. suitcase will be ready as soon Super. as you tell me. <laughs> so for all your travel, when it comes to adventure travel, it's crazy travel. Number one, Luke and Romy are amazing people. They have uh, their philosophy when it comes to travel. I've traveled with them last year, as in I went to I went to Vietnam, to Bali, and to Thailand with them. Okay. And uh, as in. I trekked up a mountain. I I did overnight stays amazing, on trains. I I it, it really really cool. As in, you worked out from all the food you had as well. Ah <laughs> uh, yes, you know, I went for the food. As in, you know, that was my my. my That's day. always our uh, way. But I think Asia is, is is amazing. As in uh, everything from Indeed. from culture to 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 it all. As in food. Of course, I think it's the biggest change that you would see from. Like going from Europe all the way up to Asia, oh, it's, yes. it's a completely culture shock. Huh? It's completely different. It's not actually a shock. I think it is a, a, a matter of um, absorbing what's yeah. happening around you and the diversity that there exactly. is. Um, exactly. It is it, sometimes, as in, we were in the middle of nowhere in Vietnam. It was called uh, Hue. As in, there's just one road, a uh, uh, thing, maybe one hotel, I think there was. And you just see children playing in, in, in the grass, happy, just happy there. They look at you, they, they see these foreigners. Um, and then I ended up drinking at, uh, I think it was a petrol station, um, something very <laughs> weird. Uh, okay. But yes, quite fun. Um, so yeah, keep in, keep in touch for those. So I think the food safaris, hopefully we can start traveling again. Super, super. Um, there we have it. Uh, we've gone through all the questions. Mark, I don't know if you have any final words for Thank today's you. show. Uh, that hospitality is fun. Support your local restaurants, your local producers, and be nice to each other. Yes, say. 
Super amazing. Thank you very much for answering Thank all you. the questions, for the feedback coming onto the show. It's been great having you. Um, I am going to wave you goodbye now, Mark, so I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. There you have it, guys. Episode four of the Bookie Life Chat Show with Mark Camilleri, who's a chef, um, focusing now on consultancy support services in the catering industry. He's had a lot of very good feedback um, with even just the services he offers, what's happening now, um, different things that you can do, um, and just in general, you know, having fun in the hospitality industry. I think this was a great show. I hope you guys loved it too. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time.